What's one book that changed your life? Nonfiction. It would be um, Peter Bowman's The Welfare Writer and what he uses the term uh, commercial writer, but he he means copywriter. What I liked about it was because I'd been writing off and on for a lot of years, but my, my actual employment was an admin. And I'd got into a cycle where once you do admin and you do it well, you're never going to get out of it. And I was starting to panic because I thought, you know, I've spent 10 years being a, an administrator. I really want to be a writer. How am I going to do it? And I can't remember how I came across his book, but I connected with it completely because what he said was you can be a writer. You can be paid to be a writer and you can be paid well. And that that was that's the message in in his book is you you can be paid for this and you should be paid well for this. And don't let other people tell you that you can't. And I read that at the same time as I read um, Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Workweek. And that's about working online predominantly. And the two books together, I thought, made me realise that there was actually something other than sitting in an office for two and tape an hour doing this unappreciated, undervalued work. And admin is, it's a skill. It's not um, valued as much as it should be. But yeah, so definitely Peter Bowman's The Welfare Writer made a massive difference to me. And there's, there's two actually, I think he's written a sequel to that now. But he, he gives lots of good examples of people who do niche things. So he's got a great example of somebody who writes case studies. Her name is actually Casey. So I think she had to be a case study writer. I think there's a law there that says, you know, that you have to do that. For that. It's called nominative determinism. Yes, that's right. There is. Yeah, like that estate agent <laughs> called Holmes. You know, yeah. Amazing. So yeah, definitely. Um fiction, I don't know. I, I I get very involved with my fiction and it's it's hard to pick one. I think um definitely Philip Pullman's Northern Lights trilogy, which of course is is aimed at children, uh or young people, but I reread the Northern Lights trilogy every so often and I just I, the world he creates I just think you know, I would love to be able to create a world like that you know I don't I don't write fiction because I'm too lazy but his stuff um but also when I was when I was very young I used to read a lot of Diana Wynne Jones and I think I like that because that's it's that fantasy it's that that world building literally world building that's so different and I reread a Tale of Time City at least once a year, if not twice. I don't read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi, but those those I do. Um, and I think maybe uh, people who write for younger audiences do that better because I think children are better at world building and they're more receptive to it. And so I think you get a better experience because the authors aren't coming with any pre- preconceived ideas and they know that their readers aren't either. And so you get, you get a, a very visual world and I'm a visual reader so I can always see it in my mind so I I get quite excited if there's something that's richly described that that draws me in and I I do I don't read a lot of adult fantasy and I think people who do it well are those people who can make it believable and I think that's what that's what Philip Pullman does that's what Diana Wynne Jones did is to to draw you in and and make you believe that 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 is a, a place that if you were very lucky you could go and visit it too but you can't.